The first assault rifle models designed by Mikhail Kalashnikov gained popularity because they were waterproof. A later version was made for cartridges smaller than the 7.62 mm original, but they often got jammed. Although Kalashnikov received no formal education in engineering, either before or after that time, it didn't take him long to resolve a problem that many of his colleagues had been unable to cope with. The result was the AK-74 variant, which used 5.45 mm cartridges. Just like its older brother, it too was waterproof. Today, critics often claim that the AK is outdated, but professionals note that any changes to make it more fashionable or modern looking would inevitably affect its most important feature, reliability. These soldiers are all set for another exercise that could earn them the right to wear the crimson beret, the distinguishing sign that marks them out as soldiers belonging to an elite squad. They like to joke that if it were possible to train men to be as tough as the Kalashnikov, they would be the world's best special forces units. After the decision was made to select this weapon as the new Soviet assault rifle, the Russians immediately began improvements on it, even before it was issued. Uh, and they kept improving it, working on every feature of the rifle to optimize performance. Uh, the difference in that story is when the United States selected the M16 rifle from Colt, they forced uh, the rifle to be issued for combat use before adequate testing to the United States government literally did nothing for 15 to 20 years after World War II to get serious about a lightweight semi-automatic rifle. Check it and then put the safety back on. The um, impact, and we were shooting at uh, 25 yards, uh, the bullet is not fast, but it's a heavy pounding bullet, very effective. Anton Kalmikov is a specialist in ballistics. He is skeptical of the superiority of the iconic brand. He even claims that somebody other than Kalashnikov designed the celebrated assault rifle. He alleges that Kalashnikov borrowed the concept from a German designer, Hugo Schmeiser. At the end of the war, Schmeiser designed the fairly effective STG-44 assault rifle. And it is true that Kalashnikov's design does resemble the German variant. Schmeisser and other German specialists contributed to the development of the new product. The Germans and some Soviet inventors worked on it together. Claiming that it was made by some ordinary sergeant is utterly preposterous. Mikhail Kalashnikov worked at the Ishevsk plant since 1949. He and his colleagues have heard these accusations before. Claims that the young designer took advice from Schmeiser have been denied so many times, they think further debate is pointless. This place is awash with rumors. It's no secret that the German designer Hugo Schmeiser worked in this building after the war. I've seen an article on the internet claiming that he gave casual advice to the young Mikhail Kalashnikov, just in passing. That sounds ludicrous. Kalashnikov's work was a carefully guarded secret. Obviously, Hugo Schmeiser had no access to it. With their Kalashnikov still wet after being carried through water, these men are ready to face a sand mound. Fighters in this special squad are being trained to handle standard weapons. The brand new AK-12 model will be tried out in exactly the same conditions and then sent on to Russia's army and police force. Kalashnikov was often asked about his rifle's design. He made no secret of the fact that he had indeed borrowed many ideas, but they had come from his Soviet colleagues, not from Hugo Schmeiser. Kalashnikov was able to integrate various solutions within one design to best advantage. Moreover, the new assault rifle was much more sturdy than its rivals. Whenever a Kalashnikov ran out of ammunition, it was still very useful in hand-to-hand -hand fighting. Once bullets were available again, firing could resume without worrying about cleaning or lubricating the gun in battle. 
the rifle was designed so that any illiterate person in the world could operate it, disassemble it for basic cleaning, if any, and uh, use it under all conditions. They had a um, documentary once on the History Channel where they were talking about the Afghans using the AKs in Afghanistan, and they had no concept to clean it. Why would you do that? And so they said they finally taught them to take their shoelaces off, tie them in a knot, dip it in motor oil, and pull that shoestring through the bore. They said that was clean. That was clean enough. When Kalashnikov made his weapon in 1947, the Soviet Army desperately needed a modern assault rifle. The AK was a timely solution. Over time, Kalashnikov created a wide variety of rifles and machine guns. A concept formulated by one person is built into all these items. Their design is based on a single principle. The parts are interchangeable. The fact that this broad range of weapons has been designed by one person makes them very convenient. In the early 1990s, Mikhail Kalashnikov had his first opportunity to attend international small firearms exhibitions. Times had changed. Now civilian weapons for hunting and sporting purposes were being developed based on his rifle. Kalashnikov personally tested the new models, as he had always done for his products. The Saiga, a semi-automatic shotgun based on the Kalashnikov, takes less than a couple of seconds to be ready to fire. The United States, formerly a potential adversary, has been one of the most active customers for the Russian-made Saiga. The Americans have compared their firearm to our Saiga 12. The design of this shotgun is based on the Kalashnikov assault rifle. As it turns out, the Saiga 12 is a more attractive weapon. It's more powerful and capable of more effective rapid fire. The Americans had to swallow their pride. Earlier this year, our plant signed contracts with the Americans for thousands of Saiga 12 units to be supplied to their police force. All Kalashnikov models are assembled in the same shop and go through the same quality control tests before being shipped to a customer. We're entering the freezer now to pick up the assault rifle. It's been exposed to temperatures of up to minus 50 degrees Celsius for nearly an hour. In my experience, the Kalashnikov has never had any problems working in freezing conditions. Not once has it jammed. This gun is very durable. One of the final tests is quite possibly the toughest. The assault rifle is dropped onto a concrete slab from a height of two and a half meters. We're at the same firing range where Mr. Kalashnikov and Stoner met in May of 1990. They were talking about uh, durability of the weapons and what kind of tests they had to go through to make sure they were uh, durable enough to, to withstand battlefield conditions. And one of the things that Stoner said was that he was required to drop this weapon from 11 feet and drop on concrete and be able to pick up the weapon and fire it. And at that point, Kalashnikov started laughing. And they asked him what he was laughing about. And he said, well, the way we do it in Russia is if the weapon doesn't pr function properly, they take the designer and they drop him from 11 feet onto a concrete floor. <laughs> Yet another key feature of the Kalashnikov is that almost anyone can use it, allowing it to hold its ground for more than 60 years. It's equally suited both to novices who have only just laid hands on it and professionals dealing with specific tasks. The beginner needs only a short time to acquaint himself with the rifle. 
Veteran Kalashnikov users, such as Special Forces, can modify their weapons, the choice depending on the mission. When we get a Kalashnikov assault rifle from the depot, we fit it out with a sight. This is a sample tuned up for a marksman. It features a retractable stock for ease of use. I can change the length of the stock too. I fixed a pistol grip onto it to make it more comfortable. The magazine holds 60 cartridges, more than the standard version. As the Special Interior Ministry squad wraps up its training exercise, each fighter must make sure that their weapon is still ready for battle after such extreme conditions. Meanwhile, the workday at the Azhevsk machine building plant is drawing to a close. What's left is the final trial for the new rifle. A special video camera is set up next to Kalashnikov that has just gone through a rigorous series of tests. It records in slow motion every one of the Kalashnikov's moving parts. The gun saves the lives of soldiers on assignment. That's what it's supposed to do. And it always functions to the best of its abilities, whether covered in mud or frost. Mikhail Kalashnikov is now 93 years old. He's outlived most of his friends and rivals. Eugene Stoner, creator of the US Army's M16, died in 1997. In recent years, Kalashnikov has become increasingly unhappy about his rifle's reputation. Each year, an average of a quarter of a million people are killed by bullets fired from one of his weapons. I didn't want to design a weapon that was going to be used in wide-scale fratricidal war. I only wanted to help protect my country's borders. That's what I would wish for everybody, as well as myself. I have gone through every trial and tribulation, and I'm ready to go on working. There are some 100 million like me in the world. They say I have yet to outlive my usefulness. Far from it. I will be around for several decades more. I'm not easily replaced. Everything is changing, but I'm still, as I have always been, an assault rifle. My name is Kalashnikov.